Okay, here we're going to be looking at a foreign currency transaction. This is where a domestic corporation either buys or sells a product to a foreign corporation, and then in turn the foreign corporation pays for this product based on their foreign currency. And for our example here, we're going to be looking at a sale on 11-2 of year one, where domestic corporation A sells inventory or merchandise here worth $100,000, and it's going to be denominated in a foreign currency to foreign corporation B, and the delivery will be on 130 of the year two. And what we have to be concerned with here is the uh, recording of uh, this sale here in our balance sheet at the time of the sale. And then we have to make a reevaluation at the year end. And then we also have to record the uh, transaction here at the settlement date or the delivery here of that sale. Okay, to handle foreign currency transactions, we have two different methods. First here would be the cash flow method. That's where we accumulate any gains or losses in these currency transactions as unrealized gains or losses here on the balance sheet. And then for the fair value method, this is where any gains or losses on those currency transactions get immediately realized here as part of net income on the income statement. All right, first I'll go through a detailed example on how to use the fair value method. Then I'll show you how to use the cash flow method based on the difference between how currency gains and losses are handled between the two methods. Unrealized gains and losses here for the cash flow method versus realized gains and losses here for the fair value method. Okay, to calculate our accounts receivable, our sales, and any gains or losses on these currency transactions, we're going to have to convert the dollar amount of inventory sold into what it's worth here in terms of the foreign currency be being received. And we do that through the spot rate or the exchange rate for the dollar. Okay, when I'm going through this example, I'm going to be referring to the spot rate. Well, that's really the exchange rate for what a dollar is worth in terms of the foreign currency. So in this case here, where we get a spot rate of 1.1584, that means that $1 is worth $1.15 plus this extra amount here. For our conversion calculations, we start with the time of the sale here. So we have to determine the spot rate at the time of the sale, and we take that spot rate times the uh, dollar value of the inventory we're selling, and that would equal our sales value of the inventory based on the exchange rate of those dollars. So we sold $100,000 worth of inventory, and we're going to receive $115,840 for that sale here of that inventory. And then the next thing we have to do is we have to make a revaluation at the year end, and that's where we compare the spot rate at the time of the sale with the year end spot rate. And in this case, we had an increase here from the beginning uh, or the time of the sale to the end of the year. So you take uh, that difference here in the spot rate at the end of the year minus the spot rate at the, at the time of the sale times the inventory value again. And in this case, we had an increase here of $10,130. So that was a gain. And then you have to determine your settlement date or, or your delivery date. And this is where you would take and compare the uh, spot rate here at the end of the year with the spot rate here at the delivery date. In this case, we had a decrease from the end of the year to the delivery date here in the next year. So you would take that spot rate here at, at the delivery date and subtract the spot rate here at the end of the year and then take it times your inventory amount. And in this case, we had a decrease here of $1,410. So that would be a loss. Now let's look at how we record this sales transaction on our balance sheet. Starting with our accounts receivable, we would debit it for $115,840. That's for the sales that we calculated. And then we'd also debit it or increase it here by $10,130. That's for the year-end revaluation of the currency, and that was a gain. And then we'd credit it or reduce it here by $1,410. That's for the settlement or the delivery date currency loss. Okay, now moving over to our income statement accounts and our net income. 
our sales account here, we'd credit it or increase it here for $115,840. That's the sales we calculated. And then our gains and losses that we calculated. They would be recognized or realized here as part of net income. And we'll look at them in terms of a revenue account here. So our revaluation, year-end revaluation gain, we'd credit it here for $10,130. And then for the settlement date or the delivery date loss here, uh, we would debit it or return reduce this realized gain here by fourteen hundred and ten dollars that would be a loss here and then at the end of the period we'd close both this uh, ten thousand one hundred and thirty dollar gain and the fourteen hundred and ten dollar loss to our retained earnings account so we'd credit our retained earnings here for ten thousand one hundred and thirty dollars and we uh, for that gain and then we debit or reduce our retained earnings for the fourteen hundred and ten dollar loss that we recognized okay moving back to our accounts receivable on the balance sheet and looking at the settlement date or the delivery date so our $115,840 in our accounts receivable, and we would net any gains and losses against that. And then the balance amount here was $124,560. So we'd credit our accounts receivable for that amount, and then we debit or increase our cash for the $124,560. And now if we look here at our spot rate at the delivery date here of 1.2456. Now if we take that times the original inventory valuation here on a dollar basis of $100,000, that's also $124,560. So any of the gains and losses here that are uh, netted on our accounts receivable and the accounts receivable itself based on the uh, currency valuation equates to this um, spot rate here on the 130 or the uh, delivery date. All right here we're going to look at the cash flow method for foreign currency transactions. Now the cash flow method it, we would use the same procedures, the same calculations as we did for the fair value method with the exception of how we recognize any of these currency gains and losses. Now with the fair value method we recognize those currency gains and losses immediately here as a realized gain or loss as part of our net income. Now with the cash flow method we recognize those gains and losses here as unrealized gains and losses and that's they're in a, held in this account here under stockholders equity in the balance sheet now they're held in this account and accumulated in this account until the settlement date or the delivery date and then they're moved over and they're recognized there is a gain or loss as part of our net income now for an example here where we had this ten thousand one hundred and thirty dollar gain for that end of year adjustment we would credit this unrealized gain and loss for that amount and then for the fourteen hundred and ten dollar loss for the at the settlement date we would debit in this case the unrealized gain and loss and then at the settlement date we net out our ten thousand one hundred thirty dollar gain with the fourteen hundred and ten dollar loss so we'd have a net gain here of eighty seven hundred and twenty dollars and at this point it's an unrealized gain so then we would close this unrealized gain here to the realized gain as part of our net income so in this case we would have debited 8720 here an unrealized gain and then we would have credited credited our realized gain here for eighty seven hundred and twenty seventy dollars and that's represented here as a revenue account and then at the end of the period or uh, end of the year we would close this realized gain and loss out to our retained earnings and in this case we we had eighty two hundred and seventy dollars here for this realized gain or a credit amount here of a realized gain and then we would credit our retained earnings for that amount here eighty two hundred and seventy dollars Okay, in summary, using the fair value method, recognizing each currency gains and losses immediately as part of net income, and then for the cash flow method, accumulate those gains and losses here for the currency as unrealized gains and losses, and then move them over to realized gains and losses only after the settlement date or the delivery date.